Well, history is important. Precedent's important. America's institutions are important. We need to study these things. We need to respect them. They're symbols all across the country to remind us of the men who made this country great. It drives me crazy when these young libs tear down things like that. There's no better symbol for American excellence than the White House. George Washington wanted a place where the leaders of the free world could live, work, and preside over the country. Now, a lot's happened. The British burned it down. It was rebuilt and expanded. But through all of that, every president who lived in the White House respected it. They understood its importance and how sacred it was. Until now. Remember when Obama kicked his feet up on the Resolute desk? I didn't go crazy. When he wore a tan suit, I didn't go nuts. Obama even invited Snoop to the White House, who lit one up in the bathroom. Boom. Next thing I do is pull that thing on my sock. <laughs> 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 I heard somebody coming. <laughs> Put him out real quick and got on back to the party. <laughs> now, Snoop wasn't the first. Willie Nelson went on the White House roof and smoked with Jimmy Carter's son in the 70s. When Willie Nelson wrote his autobiography, he confessed that he smoked pot uh, in the White House when, one night when he was spending the night with me. And he says that his companion that shared the pot with him was one of the servants at the White House. That is not exactly true. It actually was one of my sons. <laughs> now, Bill Clinton picked up where JFK left off, and let's just say uh, took some risks in the people's house. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. But at least Clinton kept things behind closed doors. Now, we knew Joe Biden liked the skinny dip in front of the Secret Service agents when he was VP, but this weekend... Joe Biden let it all hang out on the South Lawn. He threw a big gay pride party at the White House, and they freed the nip. Welcome to the White House. Thank you. <laughs> Happy Pride Month. Happy Pride Year. Happy Pride Life. Can we take a little video? Hi, Mr. President. It is an honor. Fans' rights are human rights. Oh, it's a video. Oh, it's a video. Are we topped this at the White House? Oh, so they basically opened Hunter's laptop on the South Lawn. But that wasn't one of Hunter's friends. The Flasher's Joe's friend, Rose Montoya. And the Flasher shatters. That's right, the Flasher's trans. And if you're trans, you can do whatever you want. If you shatter, you can do whatever you want. No shoes, no shirt, no problem. Now, if this was going to happen on any White House, I mean, my money would have been on the Trump White House, but no. The trans flasher happened on Biden's watch. Now, who put together the guest list? Was it the same people who vetted the guys we flew out of Afghanistan? Now, everybody knows there are certain places you just don't flash. Church, school, funerals, probably the White House. Women can't flash at the White House. Men can't moon at the White House. But if you're trans, anything goes. And not only that, Biden called the trans flasher a hero. We all talk about courage. Well, I see more courage in this lawn than I've seen in any time in the recent past. You're some of the bravest and most inspiring people I've ever known. And I've known a lot of good folks. Biden knows Navy SEALs, police officers, and Hunter's cleaning lady. But a guy who got breast implants is the bravest person he ever met? I got back surgery last year. Nobody called me brave. Children step over needles to go to school in San Francisco. They walk through gunfire on the south side. They're not the bravest. Biden's inspired by the trans flasher. Does the trans flasher regret exposing himself to children at the White House? First of all, going topless in Washington, D.C. is legal. And I fully support the movement in freeing the nipple. I decided to join them and cover my nipples just to play it safe because I wanted to be fully free and myself. I had zero intention of trying to be vulgar or be profane in any way. I was simply living in joy. Trans flasher, it's fine. There's no rules in this administration. There's no border, there's no debt limit, there's no inflation. New gurus can steal luggage, first sons can smoke crack on camera, and the president can take foreign bribes. The trans flasher represents decency. What is on the ballot here is the character of this country. 
decency, honor, respect. Man boobs at the White House. Moobs. Now, when Trump bought McDonald's and Burger King for the Clemson football team, the media covered it like crazy. The media called him trash. But the trans flasher isn't trashy. When Melania put some red Christmas trees up in the White House, the left called it creepy. The trans flasher isn't creepy. Now, imagine if one of Trump's guests got naked on the lawn. I mean, if Kid Rock mooned America, they'd still talk about it. But only trans flashers can moon. Now, the Biden White House, after three days, said the trans flasher, are you ready, is no longer allowed back at the White House. Finally, Joe Biden drew the line somewhere. Except the trans flasher is allowed in your kid's kindergarten class and at any underage drag brunch in the country. Apparently, the White House now has standards. Your kid's class, they're not allowed to have standards. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else. What we need in the United States is not division. What we need in the United States is not hatred. What we need in the United States is not violence and lawlessness, but is love and wisdom and compassion toward one another. Every nation has a darker side, and the easiest thing for a politician to do is to appeal to our hatred and our anger and our bigotry and greed and xenophobia and all of the alchemies of demagoguery. My father and my uncle had a vision for America, a vision of racial harmony, of prosperity for all Americans, of peace in the world, and of honest government. Their lives were tragically cut short, and America took a different path. Yet the possibility they foresaw is still alive, the America that almost was, and yet may be. I've been fighting corporate corruption my entire life, but I understand that today, the problem is much larger than a few crooked individuals. The problem is a system that no longer serves the people and a people who are so divided and so fearful that they are easily ruled. It's time to unlearn the reflexes of fear and blame and find ways to unify ourselves and turn our country around. I won't pretend to you that it will be easy, but I know what it will take. My father said it, love, wisdom and compassion toward one another. And that's where we need to start. We will scale down the war machine and bring our resources home. We will rebuild our water systems, repair our roads, modernize our railroads, and clean up our environment. We will also clean up government and earn back the people's trust. We will end the secrecy, the censorship, and the surveillance. We will again be a fearless land of liberty. The cost of freedom is always high, but Americans have always paid it. We will face honestly the darker parts of our history, the genocide, the racism, not to shame or blame or punish, but to repair as best we can in a spirit of compassion and kindness toward all. I'm inviting all of you to join me to create an America that we can believe in and be proud of again. I'm Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and I'm running for President of the United States. It feels like in, in a normal world, the walls are closing in on Joe Biden, but we don't live in a normal world. How frustrating is it to watch that hearing with Ted Cruz and the other senators get stonewalled by high-ranking members of the FBI? Grant, this is what they do every time they come into committee, and that's why it's so frustrating to only have hearings and investigations because um, they seem to not go as far as they ought. Um, I filed articles of impeachment today for Joe Biden, and uh, I'm not stopping there. Uh, the FBI's political bias is on full display. Remember the days when the FBI was respected? Nowadays, the FBI is nothing short of a, a political tool used by liberal hacks to oust their Republican opponents. And so I will be using the Holman rule during the appropriations process, something that we fought hard for in the beginning of this Congress when we made historic fundamental changes. And I will be attacking these bureaucrats' salaries individually and making sure that they are paying um, the, the, the price for withholding this information um, from members of Congress and from the American people. Grant, we talked about this last week. This is an unclassified document 
document that is redacted and they are not providing this to the American public to view. This is a, a huge problem. Heck, we even had former director James Comey admit that the FBI and DOJ would do everything in their power to not allow President Trump to be reelected. This is all uh, this all ties together. And now we have Director Ray ignoring a congressional subpoena before eventually turning over this Biden document after increased scrutiny. Uh, but there's still more. He has to release it to the American people. That is what is most important right now. And I want those 17 audio recordings for all to hear. I said it's the most important thing. We can call for the press conferences. We can call for the investigations. We can call for impeachments. We can do all these things. We've got to hear these tapes. It's imperative. Can the FBI actually withhold them from Congress if Congress wants them? So, Grant, right now the FBI is not even admitting that they have these tapes in their possession. Um, they are saying that this is used as uh, as collateral um, for this uh, foreign national, so he would have protection. And uh, we, they have not admitted to us that they have them, although uh, there's not much with the FBI that I trust right now. I want to see every detail there is with this five million dollar bribe potentially more he did say if you pay one biden five million dollars you have to pay the other biden five million dollars um so i don't think it stopped there even this foreign national was encouraged by um, the fbi informant who was putting this together to not um, make this deal um and uh if i have that name wrong it's because it's redacted but that's the way i put it together and he was encouraged do not make this bribe and he said well it's too late. The foreign national said it's too late not to make this bribe. Uh, so they are not uh, above the law, though, Grant. Congress has jurisdiction over the FBI. And I I've got news for you. Chairman Comer and those in the House Oversight Committee plan to hold Christopher Wray in contempt of Congress if he does not follow through with releasing all of this. There must be accountability. The idea of equal justice is not playing out here. And so that's a real concern to all Americans. So. As a policymaker, elected officials, we want to make sure it's equal justice for all. We want to look that it's a weaponization. Now, what, you, are you with CNN, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about this even further because when somebody weaponizes government and they actually get removed from government, let's take Andrew McCabe, okay, former d deputy. But this is no, a different well, let me, case. no, no, let me answer this is the a question. a different set of circumstances, right? I mean, the former president is accused of misleading law enforcement of a conspiracy of obstructing justice, that's a different set of facts. Are you prepared to defend him as the former president and what other actions will the House take in the House Judiciary Committee in terms of funding? Are you prepared to defend your, your network, CNN, that I'm had, you I'm, a, I'm answering your question. You could ask me any question you want, but I'm entitled to answer the question, okay? You can't put words in my mouth. Even though your network can hire Andrew McCabe, who was fired from the FBI for leaking classified documents. Did you remove him from your network? No, you continue to put him on to give judgment against President Mr. Trump. Speaker. You also hire Clapper. Clapper has come out publicly. Mr. Speaker, and what, steps I the House going, what steps is the House going to take in terms of... Is there any effort to defund the FBI, any effort to defund the Department of Justice after what you've seen over the last several days? So your network hires Clapper, who literally lied to the American public, one of 51 other individuals that had briefings and used it politically to tell the American public that a laptop was Russia collusion, even though it had all this information about the Biden administration. Are you prepared to get rid of those people from your network? Because my concern as a policymaker is that when you weaponize government and now you're weaponizing networks, that is wrong. So we will take all of our power to make sure that the legal system in America gets the blinders back on and people are treated fairly. I have a real problem that your network actually pays people Speaker who McCarthy. did classified information and then lied to the American public to try to influence a presidential election, and then you put them on your network to give an but, opinion but about, about a president, president and, and I'm Trump. answering your your But you're not answering what Oh, that, very clearly, what because what your network has do. done has weaponized at the same time. I think equal justice is important for us. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Thanks, Senator Welch. Senator Blackburn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, um, 
Mr. Abadi, I want to come to you because Tennesseans are incredibly concerned about the politicization of the FBI. And they have watched the FBI target parents, people of faith, people with conservative values. And I am often asked, what group is going to be next? And how did we get to this, to this point? Because they have watched the FBI under your leadership, draw their guns on a pro-life advocate. That was stunning to them. That was done in front of his wife and children. They have labeled parents interested in education as domestic terrorists. And all parents should be interested and are interested in their children's education. They watched uh, the raid on a former president and a political opponent on his home. And these have confirmed their worth, worst fears, that there are indeed two tiers of justice, and that there is a political cabal within the FBI that sees it that way. Because when Hillary Clinton mishandled information and she wiped her email server with a tool called BleachBit and then beat the mobile devices with a hammer, and destroyed those SIM cards, you all basically said there's nothing to see here. There is nothing to question. And when President Biden mishandled classified documents, there was no raid on his home or on his offices. But you see how President Trump has been handled with this. So it looks like the old playbook of distract and deflect. And the American people have a right to be concerned about this. Now, I want to talk about Senator Grassley's information from yesterday. Because when the FBI produced the document that you referred to earlier, uh, relating to the Biden bribery allegations, and you gave that to House Oversight, you all redacted any reference to the fact that the foreign national who allegedly bribed Joe and Hunter Biden had those 17 audio voice recordings. So first of all, why did you redact that part of the information? Senator, uh, Senator first, um, as I said before, your assertion, or anyone who makes the assertion that the FBI is politicized, I reject it wholeheartedly. It's wrong. And it is not true. The work we do, okay, Mr. And the people Abate, I see in the FBI. Then let me ask you this: You said in your response to Senator Cruz that you and the FBI do your job to the best of your ability. So why don't you tell me what your job is? Is it to defend and shield Joe Biden, or is your job to protect this country and the Constitution of the United States? Which is it? The job of the FBI is to protect the country, keep people safe, and uphold the Constitution of our great country. So Period. That's what we work to do every day. Objectively, there are not two standards of justice. There is only one. It's applied equally to each and, and every by person. Perception, there are two standards, very clear standards of justice in this country. We see it every single day. The American people see this every single day. They look at you and they see a politicized entity that is weaponizing an agency of the federal government against the American people. That is they, not the FBI that I see, Senator. That is not the FBI you see. There are a lot of good people that work for the FBI, but you have a political cabal there. So why did you decide to conceal the information in that revelation to the House Oversight Committee? Why did you redact all of that re uh, pertaining to the phone calls? We have exceptional people Within the, in You're the not FBI, answering the, the question. Best. Why did you redact that information? And they work relentlessly every day to keep this you country safe and to protect people. You chose not to reveal that the Period. calls were there, and Senator Grassley found it out anyway. Is that accurate? With regard to the you chose document, to reta you chose to redact it. Yes or no? We often redact documents to protect so sources and methods. So you chose to redact the the fact that there are 17 voice recordings, two of those with the now president, you chose to redact that and not to give that to House Oversight. 
I have no idea accurate? if there are voice recordings or not. What I will tell you with respect to the you document, no the document was redacted to protect the source, as everyone knows. Well, then and this is a question of life my and death, time potentially. has expired, but uh, I think it would be helpful if when you came before us, if you were willing to answer the questions, it would help to remove the perception that the American people have, because this is what they see. They see you do it every day. And that is politicizing the FBI and using it against the American people who don't happen to be named Biden, Clinton, or one of the elites. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator Hawley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Abadi, let me just I believe Mr. Trump will not be president. I don't think he'll end up being president of the United States. Will he win the general election? I don't believe so, no. I don't think there's any way that Donald Trump gets elected president of the United States. Tomorrow night, I think, when Hillary Clinton uh, wins, that Donald Trump will have lost this election from the very first day he announced. Donald Trump will have been kept from the White House by a big, beautiful brown wall. <laughs> Clinton has 274 in the lean Republican or solid Republican. So something has to flip. Kentucky, where Fox News can project that Donald Trump will prevail, picking up eight electoral votes. Trump will also win Indiana. If he could get a North Carolina, that would be huge. Donald Trump has won the state of North Carolina. Donald Trump will carry the state of North Carolina. But if he loses he Florida. But it's over. Donald Trump will win the state of Florida. Donald Trump will carry the state of Florida. Now Donald Trump will take Ohio. He has won Florida, North Carolina, and Ohio. Hillary Clinton's lead over Donald Trump has dwindled. And Iowa will go to Donald Trump. He would have to pick off either Pennsylvania or Michigan or Wisconsin. Pennsylvania has just been called for Donald Trump. Something has to flip. Donald Trump has won the state of Wisconsin. Uh, long faces uh, at this uh, at this viewing party here. Pennsylvania, this really just wiped away Clinton's chances of reaching the White House. The crowd has been waiting for the last 45 minutes for that call. Wolf, the scene here is so different than it was a few hours ago. Hillary Clinton conceded on the phone. Donald Trump, elected president of the United States. Why aren't I 50 points ahead? When I go into a poll, after people hear what I'm saying, I do really well if people think I'm running. Now, one thing is nobody thinks I'm running. Right. You think I'm running, right? Actually, I thought you were running last time, and I do believe that there's some announcements coming. My gut tells me there's an announcement coming in May and June that you're in. Okay. Let's see what happens. Mitt Romney, he blew it. He choked. Something happened to him. That's an election that should have been won. You think you could have won it? I would have won it. And frankly, I'm disappointed because I would have done it and I would have won it. So that was, that was what, our a, first a month set. before. Yeah, celebrity stroll, walk in the streets. That was 18 months ago. Yeah. 17 months ago, that's when he came down the escalator. You were an oracle. You called it. <laughs> Yesterday, <laughs> I was talking to one of our friends who works here who's way smarter than me, maybe smarter than you, and he's like, oh, I bet Brian Kilmeade. And I was like, who do you think understands America better, you or Brian Kilmeade? <laughs> right. And it turns out you did. Right. There you go. Uh, in a way, because this guy said this thing's been over for a month. Uh, yes. Really? How do you know that? I said every one of these states is within the margin of error. The pollsters are admitting to you they're not positive. Why can't it go in one direction? You turned out to be right and really the only one. I mean, there are people in my neighborhood in Northwest D.C. who have no idea Donald Trump is going to elect the president. Mm -hmm. They're going to freak out when they Tucker, win. Tucker, how did it happen? It happened because we didn't understand the country we preside over. And by we, not just the political class in D.C., but anybody with authority or money in the United States who just didn't understand the country and, by the way, didn't care to. That's the thing. People just had their preconceptions about the forces driving this election, about Trump's flaws and Hillary's strengths, and they just kind of went with that. And they sure. never met anybody who disagreed. I mean, when you knew things, something bizarre was happening, 
was at 5.30 yesterday when the first round of exit polls came out, and it showed that he was outperforming, Trump was outperforming Mitt Romney and John McCain among African American and Hispanic voters. And you're like, well, wait a second. The one thing we know if we watch television is right. Trump is a terrible racist and he's going to start a pogrom against Hispanics. Well, he's actually doing better than Mitt Romney sure. did among Hispanic voters, so maybe we're missing this. But the first round of exit polls ultimately proved to be wrong. And this is much like uh, what happened over but in... that part was right. That, th was that, right. that aspect yeah. of it was ultimately the, you know, it looked like she was actually going to win early on. Right. And that, that's what sure. all the networks were feeling, you know, by 11 uh, o'clock tonight, last night, they were probably going to call it. But it's kind of like our Brexit moment. The polls were wrong. Yes. You know, there were a couple of polls that got it right. Uh, Investors Business Daily was right. Rasmussen was right. The USC poll LA was right. LA Times. But the big polls were wrong. The Washington Post, uh, NBC, Wall Street Journal, all wrong. But the contempt that the people analyzing this election had for anybody with an alternative point of view. I mean, it was like you were denying evolution or something, seriously, mm -hmm. because their preconceptions were so strong they couldn't break out of them. But just like Brexit was not about Nigel Farage, as impressive as he is, this is not entirely about Donald Trump. This is a reaction against the people in charge. And look, if you're not in the elite media, if you're not on Wall Street, if you're not in the political class, look at the people who run the country. They sneer at you. They have contempt for you. There's nothing about you that they like. And you resent that after all. This is a democracy. Like, the average person can vote, we just learned last night. Well, I'm going to add to that. Celebrities. Yeah. Well, Every celebrity, exactly right. whether they're performing with Hillary Clinton, they're uh, going tweeting or, or campaigning for her, many of which foolishly said they're going to leave the country if he, in fact, wins. Right. Celebrities, instead of being, yeah, you might like their album, but you kind of resent the fact that they're in your face telling you what to do. And that's what America did. They went back and said, I, yeah, you're a good actor. You can sing well. I like your music, but I'm not going to take your political advice. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of people who are like, you know what, Lena Dunham's for this? I'm not. I'm actually not for this. You know they're all leaving the country, too, Tucker. Uh, well, you know, there's some upside to this. Let me just say, no, I'm, I'm uh, you know, look, here's the point. You might finally lose share. This is a massive react, but I do think this is something that the Trump voters should think about. Every power center in American life is arrayed against Trump. You know, it's tough. It there needs to be some kind of reconciliation to some extent, because there's nobody at the, with a hand on the lever of power who was for this. And I, I'll be really interested to see the reaction this morning. Such as the Democratic Party, it's not just I, Hillary. I don't know what you mean. What do you mean there's no one on the lever of power I who's mean for this? that everybody at the top levels of American business, in finance, in the arts, in academia, I just can't overstate it. Mm -hmm. They're horrified by this. Does it remind and, you of what happened with Ronald Reagan? I, I didn't, I was too young really when he was around, but I um, had to do some research for a speech I yeah. gave. And I remember reading about him working for GE before he said he was gonna run for president. Sure. He would go into the rust states and he would stand on a box and talk to all these mm -hmm. union workers and they all thought, who's this Hollywood elite coming here? No and doubt. then he stood on the box and he was wearing jeans and a, and a cowboy hat and they all fell in love with him because he was just a man of the people. I was at the last Reagan rally, actually, that cycle. It was at Del Mar Racetrack in 1980. It's different in this sense. Reagan was a two-term governor of California and you sort of knew what he thought and, you know, the elites despised him and sneered at him and thought he was stupid, but in the end, he was a known quantity to some extent because he was a, a seasoned politician. Donald Trump is the only person in American history not to, you know, lead an army or serve an office before getting elected. And so it does put him in a separate category. And the fear of the unknown is part of this. I mean, just to be, I mean, part of it is just snobbery and stupidity. And I think that 95% of political analysts should quit and go sell insurance. I think most <laughs> pollsters should, you know, be in the aluminum sure. siding business. But I do think they're at the core of it, there is a legitimate worry about, well, what does come next? Well, and I think Trump can fix that. Tucker, uh, if the control room could put up the map that shows the counties in America that went for Trump, right. from sea to shining sea, it is a sea of red. That's right. And uh, Trump is red and Hillary is blue. There's just, that represents, it's like a heat map. It represents the anger all across the United States with Washington. Jessica and, Tarlow said, and crazy the way things red. Are going. She yeah, said, it's crazy, crazy red. pretty much a total inversion of what that map would have looked like 50 years ago. I mean, the Democratic Party was historically the party of the cities and the farms, right? And now, mm -hmm. of course, it's the party of really the suburbs and the coasts, and right. to some extent, the urban course. But everything else is Republican. This is a real challenge. Last night in the exit polling, and I think this is true, 97% of people who voted for Hillary Clinton described Donald Trump as scary, as scary. And 94% of people who voted for Trump described Hillary as scary. So there's a me there really is a real divide here. One of my neighbors just called me last night and said, I'm selling my house. Well, this what? Is, uh, Calm down. Because wow. of this? Right. I think Northwest D.C. is going to deep. Look, Northwest D.C. is about the business of government. It's, it's about lobbying, of mm -hmm. course. It's about, you know, elected office. 
it's about working at the agencies. Well, why All are they selling people, their house? Where are they going to go? I'm just saying the emotional yeah. reaction is, is overwhelming. Right. right. They know that Trump is a threat to them. Right. And to their monopoly on power, and they're really upset. A lot of people move it out because you get in your own show in Washington. You know, let's be honest, Tucker. <laughs> but the other thing I think is important there's so much time to analyze. That this is what you're going to hear throughout the day. If it wasn't for WikiLeaks, yeah. and if it wasn't for Comey, she wins. The, number thing you're gonna, the other thing that could happen, which is going to be fascinating, since Donald Trump owes so few people so little, he will be That's free to do it. whatever the heck he That's wants right, exactly to get right. done. And who knows, his first call might be who the people he likes who are on the Democratic side That's right. or people that work with him on the Republican side. And yeah. you might get this thing happening where things get actually done because he's not really dug into party no, that, politics. That is, I think that's a really, really wise point. And to your first point, look, I, I hate to beat up on people who just lost, and I'm not going to beat up on Hillary. I'm just going to make the obvious point that this is a populist year. We knew that going in. And they nominated an elitist candidate. It doesn't mean no. she's an evil candidate, but she's certainly not a populist. And they did it because they, the elites in their party rigged the system. That's what parties exist to do, to rig systems. And they succeeded. The Republicans tried to rig the Republican system, right. nominating process, and they failed. And Donald Trump became the they nominee. They didn't try to rig it. I think they left it really level, and that forced 17 people to think they actually thought that Jim was Bush raised $125 million before it even started as a way right. of saying to everyone else, you'd be insane to jump in. But Reinstein, we give him that money. Uh, no, that's true. Reince is going to be joining us uh, 50 minutes from right now. Uh, by the way, in the last one minute's worth of soundbiting, yeah. uh, we just received word that Hillary Clinton currently is leading with the popular vote. Mm -hmm. uh, as you can see, she is slightly ahead. It's uh, pretty much 47.6 to 47.6, uh, but obviously going. in oh, the Electoral College, she, uh, she is at 218, he is at 274. Ultimately, if she wins the uh, popular vote, you know uh, many on the left are going to say, right. look, she actually won. Well, but, Just I mean, take a look at that. Everything is the opposite of what you expected. You exactly. expected Hillary to win. You expected Trump to contest the outcome and say it's not legitimate. But actually, it's very likely, certainly possible. She didn't go out last night and address her, her supporters. Is that no, bad? She didn't. Well, it's sad because clearly she couldn't face it, right? right? But it's also bad because you need, a, symbolically, it's a ritual, and Tucker, you need to go through closure. I lost. Look at me. I lost. The country needs that, and I hope she will do that. Tucker, I couldn't help but think about her staff, though, yes, because you don't too. ever want anyone to lose their job. What are they all going to do now? Is it easy for them all to get another job in Washington? You know, that's a great question. I mean, again, the business of Washington is influencing the tax code primarily, but basically influencing the working of government for the benefit of people, and we get rich doing it. And will that continue to the degree it has? Probably not. Lobbyists are weeping this morning. I'm but, not joking. But by the way, Ainsley, keep in mind, as President Obama told us eight years ago, elections have consequences. Yeah. So there you go. Have to look yeah. at the right this one has big consequences. Uh, the consequence for you being on this couch is you have wound up, as Brian mentioned earlier, with a brand new show. It's going to start Monday night. It's called Tucker Carlson Tonight. What will we talk about? <laughs> 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 it's like, right. we'll be in D.C. I'll be the only person left in the city. Yeah, because you've all. always been at a loss for words, right? <laughs> all right. Tucker, thank yes. you very much. Congratulations, thank you Tucker. Thank you, as always, Ainsley. Love uh, you. You can tell he was up late. He's prying open a coffee <laughs> right now. Uh, on TV. Sorry, excuse uh, me. Uh, it's also pretty clear that she like, he, he likes Ainsley better than both of us. I do. Well, I do. Like America does. Unbelievable. Oh. <laughs> Make yourself right. at home, Tucker. Okay. All right. Here's a question for you. Just how far are the radical left and inside the Beltway bandits willing to go to stop him? We all know they hate him for winning the fight to protect life, for exposing their deep state, for draining their precious swamp. And they already know he'll crush Biden. So like a pack of rabid wolves, they attack. So let's impeach him. Let's get tainted radical left prosecutors to charge him. Let's conspire with Hillary and the FBI with fake stories about him. All to distract from Biden's incompetence, weakness, and money-grabbing corruption. But here's the thing, he'll never blink. That's called having the courage of your convictions. And it's why he's our president. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message.